Good morning, everyone. Day 14 of Lent, your emptiness. What is it from a divine perspective? I think this is another really great topic. I, I reflect on it often because for me, emptiness leaves me wanting to be filled. Uh, not always, but most of the time. When there's emptiness, there is a desire to move into fullness. And so it begs the question, if we go through life and there is a gap between where we are and where we're going to, that gap is going to be a spaciousness that might feel like emptiness. So emptiness isn't necessarily a bad thing. It can be an indicator, though, right, that we are not aligned with spirit. Uh, when we're not aligned with spirit, things are disjointed, out of flow, and they can be a flag to, to move us into a, uh, heightened, a heightened change. So I don't want to put a, a singular definition on emptiness. But let's take it from this perspective this morning. What's it like when you feel empty? What does it feel like? Are there certain emotions that come up within you in emptiness or around emptiness? For instance, if you feel empty, does it trigger a feeling of being abandoned? If you feel empty, does it trigger self-judgment to think you're not doing something right? What happens when you experience emptiness? And what would it be like if you had the sentiment that Rumi has, that the beauty of your own emptiness filled you until dawn? That you were so at ease in the emptiness that it was beautiful to you and that the beauty of it itself filled you. I think that we have this example in Jesus in implicit ways, not so much in explicit ways. He doesn't speak a lot in these philosophical terms. He's speaking parables to people who are sheep herders and common working people. So he doesn't, he, he does speak philosophically, right? We have some beautiful phrases attributed to him. But you'll see at different times in his life that he moves into solitude with great meaning. And I think that's where we might get a nuance of his stance when it comes to emptiness. You'll notice each time he goes away, something very powerful happens between him and the uncreated source. And he comes back even more certain, more convicted, more on fire for whatever it is he's doing, or more completely surrendered even if it's not an eagerness. Like at Gethsemane, he certainly wasn't excited about the prospect of being crucified. So we have in Jesus this implicit experience that to move away from the normal ways we're filled creates a space for deeper connection. And we can look at it as a stepping stone, right? Because if we're ultimately meant to get to where Rumi was, that the beauty of his emptiness filled him till dawn. We can let stepping into emptiness, I'm going to use the word spaciousness, can be a stepping stone. We can say it's a goal. I'm stepping into spaciousness in order to be filled. And then ultimately find that the spaciousness itself fills us. But it's not usually very easy to step right into the knowing that we have in the Rumi poem until it actually reveals itself to us. And then on a very practical level, before we begin our devotional, how do you work with 
moments when you feel empty and you don't want to feel empty, what do you do? Do you fill it with distractions? Do you fill it with ideas? Do you fill it with food, with social media? Do you fill it even with reading a book? Do you ever falsely fill the cup that's meant to be empty? And if so, could you try in this period of Lent, could you try to simply leave the cup unfilled? And it doesn't have to be the object of all your observation. but you could allow yourself to be empty with the goal that something's going to be revealed, that emptiness doesn't really exist as we, as we really know it. It's, a, it's a, a play in this world, right? There's tensions and there's, there's play of empty, full, black, white, dark, light, <laughs> dense, light, or subtle. So there's this play that goes on but I think we would find that the kind of emptiness that is the divine spaciousness is brimming with a fullness of potential and a fullness of presence. So let's go ahead and take this last bit of time to sit in emptiness together. And I invite you to take both hands and cup them and hold them in front of you as we close our eyes. So closing your eyes and you're holding your cupped hands in front of you. And let the cupped hands be the symbol of you on a deeper soul level being open, letting yourself have that spaciousness that the cup of you could be filled.
in the ways the mind and the heart seek to fill this cup. Just observe. They're not really filling the cup with anything the cup really wants. And we bring this time of dedicated emptiness to a close. I invite you to open your eyes, to recognize any different sensations you have in relation to the room, in relation to yourself. And if you will, let this day and the days to come through Lent be an exploration, a playful exploration of what finding beauty and emptiness would be like. Great to be with you. <laughs>